Hey guys, uh, welcome back, and let's get started again on the modeling for the character. So let's just jump into Blender really quick. All right, there we go. So what we'll be doing today is working on the inner tubing that's right here for the robot. And we'll do the cylinder, we'll add a little bit of like a rectangular square and have pipes kind of leading in and out. So let's just get started. So to begin, what I want to do is just add a cylinder. Let's go to add mesh cylinder. And with this piece, hmm, I think what we can do is come over to this little box that gives us some properties for our object. Let's add or let's change the vertice count from 32 to eight. This way, when we kind of work our way up, we're not taking more time trying to fix anything we need to possibly fix. All right, so let's go over here. Let's move this over to the side. There we go. And let's scale this guy. Let's scale this guy on the X and the Y axis. Holding this little floating blue circle that'll lock it from scaling on the Z axis. And there we go. The more we push it inward, the thinner it starts to get. We can make it a little bit thinner. That's about good. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so with that done, I think what we can do next is model this guy out. So before we do that, let me just turn the origin point from where the object is over to where the 3D cursor is. That's basically the world origin. So let's go to object, set origin to 3D cursor. So the 3D cursor is already in the world origin of this space. We do that, it moves a little dot over there. And when we apply a mirror, like so, and we change the axis to Y, it puts on one other cylinder on the opposite side. So basically we're just making one side kind of how the model has it to not have to model the same thing twice. All right, so let's add a subdivision surface as well. And for this piece, let me take a good look at this. We're not really focusing on the caps. You're not gonna see the ends of these. So we can go ahead and just go into edit mode and then select the faces on the top and on the bottom and we can delete them. So I'm just gonna press X, delete faces, and there we go. Let's right click on this guy and set the shading to smooth. So now it looks nice and smooth. And then we can just begin modeling. I'm gonna come in here and hmm, I think what I'll do with this is add a loop cut right here. And then in face select mode, I'm gonna just press alt select to loop right there. That selection, I think we'll inset like so, and then push this guy in just a smidge, like so. All right, so now let's add some supporting loops. So pressing Control R, I'm gonna add a loop over here. Let's say to around there. And then I'm gonna add a loop down here as well. Let's put that guy around there. And then for the top part right here, I'm gonna just go in and add a supporting loop. Let's say around there. And then the very last loop at the bottom right here, we can scale this out. I'm going to press S to shortcut the scaling. And hmm, I'd say it actually looks pretty good. All right, let's leave edit mode and go to object mode, see how we're doing. We just need to make this part right here a little bit tighter. And to do that, I'm just going to add another loop cut right here and push this very close to the middle edges right here. And in fact, we'll grab this loop of edges and push these inwards as well. And then we'll finish off by adding another loop right here and tightening these on this side as well. There we go, that's much better now. The last thing we can do before we kind of move on from this piece is put just a loop right here in the middle and then scale this outward like so. And we don't wanna to go too crazy but we want to give it a little bit of um, a little bit of a shape instead of it just being flat, if that makes sense. 
And I think from there, we're actually pretty good. I think the last maybe small detail we can add before we move on is just, I'm going to add a little loop cut right here. I'm going to bevel that loop cut to, let's say around there. And then we're going to inset this one and we're going to keep it fairly straight. We're not going to try to bevel or kind of round it out like we did with this piece down here. I'm going to press I for inset and control to push this guy outward. And then instead of just adding a bunch of loops, what we'll do this time is we'll just bevel all of them. Let me press Alt-Z to turn on toggle X-ray. There we go. Okay, perfect. So with all these selected, I'm going to press Control-B. And I'm just going to try to more or less get the loop I want. Let's put that guy around here. Let's see, am I missing anything? Doesn't look too bad. Let me turn on the subdivision loops. Oh, okay, never mind. That was just Blender having some weird kind of geometry rendering. Well, we're good. So let's move this guy inside. So I'm just going to press A and then one more time. And I select all the polygons. Let's move this in. And let's try to line this up with the rest of the reference. So I think what I'll do is move this a little further forward and then we'll rotate this guy. Let's say to, let's see. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That should be about ten tick marks when holding control and rotating. That's, yeah, that's pretty accurate. So let's go to the top view and let me turn on toggle x-ray. There we go. And then let's go one, two. Hmm. That's about good, actually. All right. Let's turn off toggle x-ray and let's kind of move this piece into where it goes. We have the angle. Now we just need to move it into where it needs to be. And this is actually going to be pretty far in. Let's move this a little more inward so that it looks a little bit closer to what we have. All right, there we go. That looks really nice. All right, so we got the first piece down. Let's start working on the second piece, which Honestly, it looks just like a, a little complicated rectangle with some pieces that's kind of hard to tell, but we'll just kind of make a two right here and then two tubes that kind of go to the back. In fact, I think what we can do is just copy this guy. So I'm going to press Control D. Let me go to the Y orthographic view like so. Let's just rotate this guy so we don't have to make any more modeling. Let's put this around here. Eh, let's make it a little angled downward. Not too much, just a very slight. And then let's go to the Z orthographic view. And let me grab this guy. Let's go into edit mode and let's just rotate this individually. Hmm. Okay, that looks pretty good. And let's bring this down. There we go. All right, let's go to object mode and let's just push this back a little bit. Hmm. All right, there we go. That looks pretty good. And already we're kind of using almost the same thing twice to get more work done in less amount of time. And I think from here, what we can even do is go into object mode and instead of selecting the whole thing with link select, sorry, I was trying to make a loop selection. All right. So let me go to face select instead. Let me make this loop right here and I'm going to duplicate it. 
press control D and move this out to let's say around here. Hmm. Let's move this a little inward and let's grab the loop of edges right here. Let's move this out. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's press E to extrude. And then let's do it one more time. And let's push this to say down to here. So let's go into the wire the graphic, turn on X-ray. Let's just rotate this till we get, let's say to around, let's say around there. Now let's do the same with this piece and let's just rotate it until we kind of get what we want. And then let's readjust this so that it fits a little bit better with what we're trying to do here. All right, there we go. Now let's push this guy a little bit back. And then we can even come back here and push this guy further in so that it fits inside our 3D object. And let's see. In the reference, it actually curves a little bit more backward instead of just straight down. So let's go back in, bring that at an angle, and then let's go back into the wire the graphic and let's line this up a little bit better. The closer we bring it to these edges here, the sharper this little curve right here will get. And that's kind of what I want to try to aim for. I don't want to get too close, but I want to get close enough to where it has a nice little sharp crease right there. All right, that looks pretty darn good. All right, the last thing I'll do is just kind of grab these vertices right here, push them further forward, and then a little bit inward. And then we'll scale this in. I want to scale this to say around here. That way it kind of looks like the pipes lead from inside here to out there. In fact, I need to tighten this up a little bit because it's at an angle and we need to kind of straighten it so that it's not so sharp. All right, there we go. So you can already tell from this angle, it's starting to read pretty good. I think the last thing we can do before moving on from here is just adding a little bit of shapes to this bottom piece right here. So we'll make a loop. And from there, let's grab these faces right here in a loop selection and let's inset to let's say around there. And then we can just add a loop right here. One right here. And then before we finish, let's just fix the scaling on this guy. Yeah, it's a little off. <laughs> there we go. Let's grab this guy now. These outer loops right here. All right, there we go. That's a little better. All right, so before we move on, let's make a cube. Go to add mesh cube. And then let's kind of just shape this guy in. Let's put him to around this scale and then bring him down. And I wanna actually leave him like around here. This looks pretty good. Now let's squish this guy in just a tad bit using scale for S and then Y, I'm just locking it only within the Y axis. We'll go into object mode and we'll choose this face right here and move it further back. Let's say, that's actually pretty good. And we can even adjust this a little bit more. Let's say to around there. And then what I'll do for this piece, actually let me move it back a tad bit. 
All right, so what I'll do for this piece is just bevel out some sides. And then I think we're good from there. So let me grab these edges right now in X-ray mode. Down here, let's grab these and move these a little further up so that we can start beveling them. I'm going to press Control B with these four edges selected. And let's exaggerate this a little bit. Let's just make it to stay around there. Let's do the same bevels again. Like there. All right. So that's nice and smoothed out. And what we can do now from here is grab these edges and we can actually bevel inset this one first. Let's go to press I on this face. Like so. Let's extrude inward. And then let's inset one more time. And notice around these parts of the inset, some points kind of cross. I'm going to just stop right before they cross and we'll leave it there. Let's go inside and let's get some of these vertices. So I have them all selected so far. And what I can do instead of taking my time merging one at a time, I'll just press M that takes me to merge and I'll just merge by distance. So right now the distance is 0 0.0001. I'm going to increase that. So let's just move this to the right until we start noticing some of these vertices being merged. And down here, it can show you. Let me show you again. It says removed eight vertices. That just lets you know that it's doing its job. So we can rest assured that the, the vertices got merged. So before we finish from here, let's go to face select. I want to scale this guy on the back end. Let's go to scale. Let's scale this outward just a smidge. And then it's kind of conflicting right here with this piece. So let's just make this look a little bit more interesting and cut this out from right here. Let's control Z that. Let's do that again. All right, there we go. Let's do the same thing on this side. And let's grab these two loops and scale them properly so that they're perfectly aligned. Press S, Z, zero. There we go. And then we can move these up. I want to move them. Well, okay. Odd. Let me double check this really quick. Scale, Z, zero. Okay. And then let's move these up so that they line up right around there. And let's move this piece back. And now we can delete these right here. There we go. Let's connect this path, pressing J between these two vertices. Let's go to face select and delete this face. And then we can merge these right here. And let me just double check on this side as well. Okay, so we need to fix a few things right here. But that's fine. It's kind of <laughs> part of modeling. There we go. And there we go. Now let's just connect a few of these paths around here. Let's go here and then here. And let's just press J. Let's just do that for the other two right here. There we go. And then one more down here. Okay, there we go. And now what we can do is we can have a little bit of freedom with this piece right here. I'm just going to add a simple bevel like this and we'll just call it there. So there we go. Um, I think the last thing we can do, I didn't like how this cylinder right here turned out. So let's just go ahead and fix it. Let's go to view, frame, selected. Now let's go in here, let's just kind of fix what we had made. I'm gonna delete the two supporting loops that I had created. And I'm going to go just press X to dissolve. And excuse me, let's take a look at this piece. All right, so this is a little, <laughs> this needs a little bit of love. What I'll do instead of trying to fix it from here is just make a new piece entirely. So selecting and deleting that set of faces will let me link select all these down here. I can delete these now. And 
I'll actually do the same with these and we'll work our way back to how we had it the last time. So noticing the the pieces now, it's a little bit it needs a little bit more love. So you know what, let's just do a new piece entirely. And let's do the same thing we did with this. However, this time, let's just make it a thinner piece. So I'm gonna duplicate this one right here and then scale it or scale it, move it over to this side until it reaches the middle point of these pipes like how we had previously. Now we'll scale them in before, instead of doing it how we did before, we scale it afterwards. Let's put that guy around there. All right. Let's move this a little bit more in. All right, perfect. And then let's grab these sets of loops, these sets of vertices, and let's just move them over here. All right, that looks pretty good. And then let's leave this right there and let's make an extrusion And then let's rotate this guy. And then let's do another extrusion. And let's rotate this guy as well. There we go. And let's just keep rotating and extruding. I'm just gonna move this further up so that it fits a little bit better. There we go. And then let's extrude down like that. There. So let's move this a little further in on the y-axis. All right. And I think that's looking a little bit better. Yeah, that actually looks a little bit better. So from here, let's just make a loop cut, let's say around here. And let's make another one right around there. And then in face select, I'm going to grab this section of loops and scale them until I get around this kind of size and I'll move these down just a smidge so that they line up right there. There we go. And then let's do again that supporting loops that we had talked about right there and right there. All right, there we go. That's a lot better. It's kind of clipping into the pipes that we made over here, but that's fine. In fact, we need to fix this up a tad bit more. It's clipping into the square that we made. So let's bring this in over here. And let's move this further out. Ooh, that looks really nice. All right, that's a very exaggerated piece. I actually really like it. I think I like it more than what we had originally planned. All right, so one last thing before we move on, I'm gonna duplicate this piece that we had just made and just duplicate it and push it in as around there. So the reason I'm doing this one is I'm making a sort of repetitive loop to this. So it's just a repeating edge that I think really helps sell the shape of the inside. And it kind of just gives it some more character. Let's grab these loops right here, bring them a little further out and then push them further in. And then what we'll do with this, you know, let's get a little crazy. Let's just go over to the Z orthographic, turn on the toggle X-ray and let's rotate this guy in. Let's press R to rotate, and there we go. Let's go over here, and then let's press Z S for scale, Y, zero, and then let's turn on the snapping, all right, in increment, and there we go. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just making a loop go around like so, and then we'll be cleaning it up right now. There we go. Let's move this out. Oh, don't forget to turn off your snapping. Let's move this out to, let's say, 
around here. Let's scale this upward. There we go. And then let's add a loop right around here. Oh, no, wrong side. Let's actually add one right around there. And then let's push this further back. And let's scale this guy in. All right, so we can grab all these right here. Push these in. There we go. And let's scale this just one last piece so that it fits a little bit better. There we go. Just one more. All right, let's add this right here, add an inset, and then let's clean these faces right here. Faces, there we go. And then let's grab these right here and then turn on snapping one more time just to make sure it's nice and clean. All right. Let's add a loop right there. A loop right around there and we're getting a little bit of a weird artifact going on here so let's just press s for scale y zero and there we go and then what we can do before finishing this is just going into scale fixing this one more time so it just kind of bumps out like that that looks actually really nice if we want to get a little crazy what we can do is just add a little inset right here Scale this on the Y axis, so it's a little bit more square. And then press inset one more time, like so. And then let's just add a few loops right here, just so it looks pretty interesting. There we go. And then one more. All right, let's kind of fix this up really quick because it's looking a little too exaggerated. Let's turn off the snapping and let's just go to select, add, select more or one more selection, push this back. There we go. All right. So that's a little bit of extra detail we didn't really need, but I just thought it'd be really cool to make. So yeah, there we go. We made the inside piece of this model and what we're ready to do next in the next video is just work on the rest of the headpiece here. And then from there, we'll just start adding the tiny little tiny little details that we see throughout the kind of armor or the outer shell that we had already made. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, let me know what you think drop a comment. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let us know how we're doing. And hopefully you've been liking this kind of project we've been working on. So I'll see you in the next video guys. Take care.